Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present the Czech particle physics project in your Visegrad workshop. I uh, start on the introduction. So what I would like to present to you are modules part of this project. Um, the abbreviation is CPPP, and uh, I will come back to this later because this is then very easy to find it also online. So these are learning modules and it's a learning tool which uh, is mostly intended for master classes. So aimed at high school students in the age range from 15 to 18 years. And <clears throat> these modules are dedicated to the detection. We have now two modules, which I can show you uh, of axion light particles. And uh, we have another module which is related to Higgs boson physics. In fact, it is some a very uh, easy, and we call it golden channel, uh, where the Higgs boson mass can be reconstructed. And the module is intended such that it can be done interactively. We have also modules uh, which are specialized in the sense that they help the users to uh, structure and learn uh, about Higgs bosons and supersymmetry. Uh, and this is more intended for experts. Um, this uses natural learning processing because in the Higgs area and in the supersymmetric area, we have more than about thousands or so publications over the last years. And uh, in order to search for some particular aspect of this, uh, it is helpful to have the natural learning processing to find what you are looking at. Then we have these modules already online. So you can go to cern.ch slash cppp and uh, you will be accessing these web pages. I will move on to the next slide. The goal of starting this process was that we wanted to have some interactive web application for master classes. And we would particularly like to aim at the students or children who are going to come to university. So this is for a very easy entry level of students. And uh, we have already tested it in, in some applications and made accordingly improvements to the web page. So the aim is to walk through students, the process of finding, in one case, an axion light particle, and in the other case, uh, to uh, reconstruct the Higgs boson. It is clear that in this complex theory of Higgs boson, supersymmetry, axion light particles, uh, we have to make uh, extreme simplifications but we tried to have the main idea and uh, it should be uh, realistic. So it is very simplified, the analysis, but we try to have kept some realism. The web pages also give some plots of introduction. And uh, in these plots of introduction, I have just copied out uh, these two. So the physics motivation is here that in typical colliding experiments, you have two protons which collide, and this is then illustrated here. And uh, these colliding particles make new particles. Uh, there is also a possibility, and this is what we are focusing at, is that the protons are going very close to each other they have an electric field and that will be very strong. <clears throat> so in the electric field, this can interact and it can make other particles and the particles could decay, for example, into photons with this axion light particle. This typical histogram is shown on the right hand side. You see that you have two photons which are coming from the protons which are very close, producing the axion light particle and making two photons and the physicists uh, know very well that this is then the invariant mass of this axion light particle. 
So we have this project of axion light particles where we have expect two energetic photons in the Atlas central detector. The idea of this project is that we demonstrate that it is useful to have also detectors in the forward and backward region and these are catching the protons which are deflected. So the idea is that the photons which are here in the central detector, they carry away some energy and that energy should match the energy the protons have lost and we can measure the loss of the proton energy in this AFP detectors. So there are two ways of calculating the energies directly in the central detector and in from the deflected uh, protons in the AFP detector. The diphoton events where the energy loss does not match are considered background and are removed so in this way, the AFP detector contributes to separate a signal from background events. Here is now the actual application. So when you open this module, you see such a screen. Uh, you can see on the left hand side, you can press fire. That would then trigger that two protons flying here uh, from different directions onto each other, meet in the Atlas central detector and continue flying. And you can see that one proton was deflected here and create some hits in the AFP detector. You can also see how typically it looks in the central detector and you see immediately that you do not have only two uh, <clears throat> uh, energy deposits, but you have many. So the challenge is then to, to realize that if you have an energy deposit which has no track because the photon has carrying no uh, charge, these are the photons. So the students should learn that photons are uh, not electrically charged and therefore make no track and then they should identify them. And the clean up method here is you can put with some sliders PT cuts. If you do this a few times correctly, there goes up a button uh, which allows you to uh, trigger this for many times. So you see then very quickly the protons flying and uh, the histograms on the right fill up. <clears throat> and what you can see is <clears throat> that in the right mass, there would be a peak appearing and then the student should realize that there is a peak. So they would discover this uh, axion line particle at that mass. This is a project uh, which has uh, also the possibility to make adjustments for administrators and so there is a back end. This is protected. Uh, interesting here is that all is hosted on the CERN server. And uh, if I make a change there, it is applied globally. And uh, it is also very nice that CERN offers these web services for uh, deploying such uh, and hosting such a, a web page service for master classes. And uh, it is uh, handled with um, OpenShift and it is connected to GitLab. So it uses very standard tools uh, and it is very convenient to maintain this and also allows us to add more packages. I show you briefly a similar project. The similar project here is related to the golden channel of Higgs to ZZ into four muons. And uh, on the left, you see the real publication. Uh, you see the invariant mass of the four muons, or here four leptons written. Uh, we see the peak of the Z boson, which of course goes to leptons. And we see the additional peak here. So this is a real publication uh, from the Higgs into four muons. The second peak is from the Higgs boson. When we do this in the simulation, we have again the fire button and we have some slider here, which allows us to apply a PT cut. So if one applies the slider correctly, uh, we will see the four muons 
students can then click on these objects and have a possibility to automatically calculate the invariant mass. If they do it once, they see one entry here in the invariant mass spectrum. If they do it correctly five times, then uh, there is a button to make it automatic and one would see how these two peaks start to grow. And uh, you can see that uh, it is not identical, but very, very similar to what the real experiment looks like. And students should then estimate the mass of the Higgs boson by looking at the peak, which has the highest uh, number of entries. The other part of this project is a portal. Uh, which is dedicated to Higgs bosons. Uh, this portal uh, is using a database which is automatically created from an API and web scraping methods. So the database is automatically updating every night and is running automatically. It uses natural language processing then to categorize the article according to some properties and criteria we have predefined. And this is designed uh, for implementation in the Higgs boson portal. This is described in some detail. And the components of this Higgs boson portal are also deployed with the same CERN uh, web service as described before. What are these criteria? So we can look at where the Higgs boson search research experimentally has taken place. So this is covering the LEP, the LEP area, Large Electron Positron Collider. It covers also the searches at Fem Fermilab Tevatron Collider with these experiments. And uh, since about 2010, it covers the ATLAS and CMS experiments, so it's clear it's going from searches to precision measurements of the Higgs boson. What are uh, criteria of resources? Uh, we have the scientific publications, uh, we have various type of experiments, various type of publishing methods. Uh, this also includes preprints, new results produced, of course, by the experiments on a weekly or even daily basis and released. So such a portal is very useful to stay up to date. Uh, and there's a very large number of articles. So the categorization system is, is very useful. The goal of this is an easy access to publications, collections and uh, categorization, uh, visualization of uh, deployment development precision and bringing the research closer to, to the public. What data is collected? Um, we are basing this database and natural learning processes on the publication title, abstracts, tables, graphs, measurement values, uh, production modes, decay modes, um, from Fermilab, these are quite old web pages. There is some web scrapping done uh, for CERN. It can be directly done via, via the CERN document server and a dedicated API. And uh, we extract uh, the text in, in different ways. I won't go too much into the categorization, just giving you a feeling. So it goes about the publication, experimental measurement. It is searches for new physics observed Higgs bosons, it's about production modes and decay modes. Other properties are how much data was used, what is the luminosity, what is the collision energy, what is the experiment, and the current stage of the document, is it preliminary, is it submitted or published. The method is very uh, powerful. We can see that the natural language processing works very well. So you know from machine learning the standard categories like true positives, false positives, false negatives, and you can define the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. And uh, here are the examples. So the precision of the categorization is uh, for luminosity 96, for energy it gets it correct. Uh, production modes is uh, 87 and decay modes is 81% and similar good values for recall and, and F1 values. 
So this portal looks in the following way. You see on the left hand side uh, the possibilities to make adjustments. So you can select the experiment. You can uh, make a selection on luminosity. Here is all taken. And on the right hand side, you can then see the statistics of the papers which have been analyzed. So I would like to conclude already here with some summary and outlook and also bridge to, to Credo. Uh, <clears throat> the Czech Particle Physics Project has is for, done for outreach and learning tools. It's for master classes aimed at high school students. The current modules are about an axion light particle search and the Higgs boson mass reconstruction in the golden mode. The project includes also two further modules at the moment, one for Higgs boson research and one for searches for supersymmetry. This one for Higgs boson research I showed you in some detail. The modular structure uh, of the CPPP is allowing us to add new modules, for example, for educational aspects of Credo. And I would be happy to get in contact with you and uh, maybe we can start some project uh, together to add a module uh, related to Credo. And uh, if you would like to test it out and have a look, uh, you can go to this webpage, uh, cern.ch slash cppp. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andre. We will have some questions and comments. Uh, Robert, will you start, Robert Kaminsky? Just a short comment about this, uh, almost the last point, that, um, that cppp has a modular structure and you can add um, education aspect of credo. Yeah, we are actually ready for this because uh, we have some mm, prepared already a good uh, presentations about uh, particle physics, about uh, cosmic rays, about uh, registration, detection, analysis. Uh, the question is for you, uh, how long could be this model module from uh, from Credo, because I expect you are giving lectures for students, which takes uh, just one or two hours. So how long can be this additional module? I don't think we have a particular constraint. <clears throat> uh, these modules are basically made available and we can take parts of it or we can use it entirely. I would say it is more a aid for learning uh, support. Uh, there is no particular constraint on the length. And the uh, uh, question, uh, everything what we can present can be in, in English. Yes, I think we have done everything in English as the natural language for our research. So it is possible. OK. OK, so uh, we will keep in touch with you. This is a very interesting proposition. OK, thanks. Thank you. Uh, there's another question here. Sorry for my question, maybe, but I do not uh, understand very clearly. This application is um, for the teachers which working with uh, schoolers or uh, directly for the schoolers? Because you told something that uh, many, uh, some uh, function are only after the password connection. No, uh, this is only for the administrator. For example, if you would like to change the speed of the colliding protons or, so, or, or such, such things, there, there are some, uh, some uh, adjustments possible for better feeling of the modules. But uh, this is only technical and this is not for the teachers. It's more for us uh, if we would like to make some adjustments or if we get comments that uh, it is too fast, it is too slow, then, then we have possibilities to adjust inside the modules without changing the code. So these additional administrator parts is, is really only for us who are maintaining this CPPP project. They are not for the teachers. Thank you. Uh, any more questions, comments? Uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.